Hello and welcome, I'm JD, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna take you through how to use console commands so that when you're testing a concept or a fleet in Nebulous Fleet Command, it's a little bit easier and you get the effects that you want. So before I dive straight into the console commands, I just wanna take you through a few things that I've found very helpful when setting up um, a test. So first, uh, I'll go into Fleet Editor. If I load up a fleet, uh, I like to keep all my game fleets up the top, usually with something that allows it to uh, auto filter by um, alphanumeric, so there's a space and zeros, keep all my game fleets up the top. And I usually use a naming convention of test with whatever I want. And then I set up various different fleets in order to test things. So I, if I wanna just shoot out a battleship to see how that goes, then I have a dummy battleship, which I've loaded with large DC lockers to simulate what an actual battleship would look like. Or if I wanna shoot at every hull, uh, I have something for that. I also have the ability to set up for various specific com combinations of pinards, radars, uh, spyglasses, um, et cetera. Just based on uh, these tests, I can pull something out. What I would recommend is always having your test fleets um, built for that test as opposed to going in and utilizing your game fleets. So next, when you're setting up the map, I always find that testing is best in the small testing range. Uh, the small testing range allows you to bypass the intro scene, which you'll see in a moment. And it also enables you just to get straight in there without having to move everything around. Because most of your fleets are already within a sensor distance. For the scenario, I usually set it to annihilation just so I don't have to deal with any of the spheres for control or capture the flag. Also have no time limit, so I'm independent of whatever I'm doing. So for this demonstration, I'll be using uh, one of my fleets, the 3CL gun fleet, which has a mix of missiles as well as guns. One thing that's important to note is that you also need to have at least one gun and a piece of ammunition or missile on a ship so that you don't accidentally trigger the uh, 30 second countdown timer when the game recognizes that none of the ships have an operational capability on either side, which means the game will automatically determine that the game is over as no one can do anything. So you want to bring at least uh, one gun, usually like 120 millimeter with maybe some HE or AP, which uh, won't really do too much damage to your test fleets. But the sequence we'll go through should alleviate that, so don't worry. But we'll use the uh, three gun fleets here. So what we're going to do is uh, start the game straight away. And the first thing you want to do when you spawn in is pause the game. So I'm going to use control space to immediately freeze the time. Now, if you haven't previously done this, you need to come into settings, uh, accessibility, and, and put your active pause speed down to 0%. You can have up to 50% um, if you want it to go in slow motion, but 0% will allow the time to be frozen which will allow you to enter the console commands. Now, when you have a quick look at the small testing range, it is still a decent size. I think it's about, that's five, that's 10. It's about, it's about 12 and a half kilometers across. So it's not too bad. And you immediately deploy facing each other with no options to deploy where you want to go. If you do want to simulate something else. You may want to use clips and a few of the commands that we'll also use so you can see them where they are. We come across the enemy fleet will start to get their track information as we are within radar range. So let's start using commands. If I press F2, you open the console command. So the first command that we're gonna enter is dbg, bot pause, and this requires the statement of true uh, after a space. We'll press enter or submit, and the game will accept the command when it's highlighted in blue. Now you notice that as we started to type, it auto-filled, so you don't have to remember these. Uh, straight off the bat, if you're able to get the first few characters, it will autofill for you and you can just pick from there. It's going to stop the AI from giving any additional commands to that ship. Now, as we did spawn in and there was a time between um, me being able to freeze the game, the, the ships will immediately start to drift and do their own thing. So let's unfreeze here and see what they're doing. Here you can see that the ships are starting to move because they have been given commands. At this point, I can't click on them. I can't do anything else. We're going to pause time again and we're going to try our second command. The next command is dbg bot idle all units. So this one doesn't require a statement of true. So you press submit. Again, it is now submitted. And so what we should see in the next few seconds is that all the orders will be cleared off these ships. Now you will see some deceleration time. And so we'll just let that occur. And after a few seconds, you can see that both of these light cruisers uh, have decelerated and have now stopped. Now, there's no reason that you specifically have to wait for this to occur. You can just rapid fire all these commands through when required. So now that we've turned off the AI and we've cleared all the commands, we're going to take control of the enemy units. 
we have to take control of the enemy units so that we're actually able to uh, move the enemy ships and set up the tests that we want. We'll type in DBG, enable enemy control. And again, the statement of true is required. The game has accepted it. And now when we click on one of the tracks, we'll actually be able to open up the same panel that we would see on one of our ships. The difference here, however, is one, we're not going to be able to see the damage control panel. And we are also limited by the fact that we can't directly fire on one of our ships. So here I am right clicking um, on one of my own light cruisers. If I open up the order panel, I can still positional fire. So things such electronic warfare testing is uh, able to be done from the enemy's point of view. I can also use the uh, positional firing for missiles, and I can also use positional firing or guns. So this is important when you're setting up your tests. You want to determine if you are the fleet that should have an action being done to you. Uh, for example, if I'm testing the ability for me to uh, dodge chaff, then I can use positional fired missiles uh, to assist with that. If I, for example, want to see damage control uh, on the damage control board of how many shots it takes for uh, something to occur, then I probably want the AI to perhaps remain on, um, or I'm going to uh, take control and then use the positional firing uh, to fire at my own ships. Now at this point in time, when I click on a ship, I can't see where they are. And when I select my ship, I'm only seeing tracks. So to make it a little bit easier on yourself, and particularly when you're doing a test, for example, on cliffs um, or the abyss, if you wanted to use a effectively a larger testing range, you come into uh, F2, you want to go uh, DBG, suspend visibility, and again, a true statement, and you'll say the visibility matrix is disabled, and now I can see the enemy ships. Now, regardless of any range that you are at, you'll be able to see these ships on the map. So if I turn off the radar for all of my ships, you will see that whilst I can't see them on the tactical map, I can still see these ships on the game view, and therefore I can still interact with them. So when I turn a radar on, the tracks will reappear. Uh, so for example, this ship has a spyglass. And if I turn on the next radar, you can see that the tracks change to a front line. Another command you may want to use is uh, speeding up time. So it can be a bit annoying if you are trying to position your ships to do a very specific function. Here, I want to set the ship at the front uh, off to the right facing towards my ships and the ship in the middle facing uh, off to the left doing its own thing. This one here can just uh, stay in the middle. But what I'm going to do now is speed up time so it's a lot quicker and I don't have to wait. I'm going to press uh, F2 to open the console. I'm going to type in time dash scale. And then I'm going to put a space. Now the next numbers that I type will be the factor that the game multiplies its speed or advances its speed by. So uh, I would recommend going no larger than 20 uh, as that can uh, get a little bit crazy. Uh, but five to 10 is probably enough. So here I'll do five. And here you can see that the time has been sped up. If I move this ship again a little bit further out, you'll see just how quickly this is occurring. And you can also see how fast the time's going by the positional error, which is bouncing around within the track. To turn this off, there's two ways. You can either come back into time scale and type in time scale dash zero, um, or you can just Pause the game and then unpause. So by control by holding control and pressing space, time is frozen. And by doing it again, it will effectively reset the time to zero. And we can tell again based on the positional uh, error, which is bouncing around within the middle of the track. When I'm testing, I'll use all these commands that I'm able to uh, position certain things and do uh, certain actions that I want to do to achieve uh, what I need to do to then present information to everyone who's viewing these videos. There are a few additional commands that you can use that I'm not overly familiar with and I haven't really used at the moment. You can come into the console and you can type in commands and this will give you a full list of commands available. And noting that by using the uh, scrolling wheel, it is gonna change uh, the view, just be aware of that. But you can see here all the different commands that are available. For example, uh, you are able to uh, destroy a component. I haven't really worked that one out. You can enable frictionless cameras. Uh, you can get objects if you wanted to spawn something in. You, you can teleport certain things. Uh, we've used time scale. They're probably the main ones. There's also a command for help, which will give you some information. 
but I, I don't think you need to go that far. I think the main things that you want to do are the, one, the commands that we have discussed. So if you wanted to test how long it would take to shoot HE, as a bit of a practical demonstration, I'm going to speed this up. How long does it, how many shots, how long does it take uh, for me to uh, kill that light cruiser by firing HE? And you can see that we're rapidly firing now. At this point, I don't really care about holding the uh, damage control board because I know that eventually it will um, eject lifeboats. It will give that space oil when it is destroyed. You can see the accuracy of various ships at certain ranges. We can see what we are destroying. Uh, we can see uh, thruster power. We can then look for the other signs on the ship of what is being destroyed. Uh, for example, each of these uh, have been taking damage. It is bow tanking, so it isn't taking um, as quickly. But if we rotate it, because again, whoop, that's movement. Uh, sorry, if we rotate it, then we'll start to see the penetration from a, a different way. There you are. You can start to see the damage inflicted to the front. The damage that's inflicted to the side we can see from the top that there are uh, some things going on internally i can't remember what each of these are and we've now issued now we've now caused a critical event lifeboats are out so we have it has suffered a critical damage you can see it's starting to lag a little bit just because of how fast we're going oh, so i'll reset back to normal and there we go all right, so that ends this video on console commands. If you've been using console commands and you found any other that are helpful during your testing, uh, put them down in the comments below. Let us know uh, how to use them so that everyone else can use it. Maybe I can learn something too. But otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and take care.